I think in this case, we have one actor on screen for, for the majority of the movie. And this this movie really would would have sunk if it weren't for how great Rel was. So you have to put a lot of faith in that actor. You have to cast the right person and they have to be willing to really go to a pretty wild place with you. Oh my gosh, first of all, I'm a huge fan of this movie. Um, wow, I absolutely adored it. I love I love movies that take place in like limited spaces um, like this. Um, but first of all, I just wanted to start off by asking you what stuck out to you about The Mill and what made you want to get involved? It was just an incredible script. I mean, the first draft, it's funny, I was specifically looking for something that took place in one location that was a dystopian science fiction thriller that like had all these elements. And uh, Josh Feldman, my producing partner, like dropped this script on my lap that he had read, I don't know, years earlier when he, when he asked me about it. And Jeff's script was just crazy good. It was just like this fever dream of a script that said so many things that I had wanted to say about the world that we live in, all told through this one guy's experience that was just extremely cinematic. And it was, for me, when you're reading scripts, it's kind of funny because sometimes you're looking for ways that you can kind of mold them and make them your own. And they're not quite perfect. And this was one that just, I couldn't sleep the night I read it because I knew I absolutely had to make this movie next. Well, when you're in a limited setting like this, I have heard directors kind of say that it can put more pressure on other aspects of the film. You know, were there any difficulties that came along uh, that came along with working in this kind of confined space? So I love working in these kinds of confined spaces as long as all the elements that you're working with are good. It just there's no there's really no room for any weak links. And I think first and foremost you're really relying on your actors to be great. And I think in this case, we have one actor on screen for, for the majority of the movie. And this this movie really would would have sunk if it weren't for how great Rel was. So you have to put a lot of faith in that actor. You have to cast the right person. And they have to be willing to really go to a pretty wild place with you. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that because, I mean, I was blown away by, um, by Rel's performance. I mean, I know he's been in kind of horror thrillers before, but how was getting the chance to work with him kind of given the, the parameters here in this limited cast? It was incredible. It was, he was my absolute first choice for the role. And I got really lucky that he was into it as much as I was into him, the idea of him doing it. And it was funny because we prepped for like four months talking about the themes of the movie, talking about the way we were going to shoot it. We were really um, methodical and how we had those conversations. And, and it felt like we knew exactly what we were getting into going into, into photography. And then something interesting happened the, the day that we were about to start shooting. I asked Ralph, you know, this set, also, the set has to be great when you're working in one space. And the set we actually built, it was 18 feet tall and 15,000 pounds of concrete. And I asked Rel if he wanted to see the set before we started shooting. And he kind of took a minute, thought about it, and said, no, no, I don't want to. Um, actually, I want to be blindfolded. And I want to wake up and see it for the first time the way that Joe wakes up and sees it for the first time. So, and this isn't a spoiler, by the way. Like, guy wakes up in a cell and doesn't know where he is. That's in the first 30 seconds of the movie. But we actually blindfolded Rel, walked him from outside of the stage and through this like dark catwalk. It was like 30 feet. It was horribly dangerous and walked him onto the set, laid him down on the ground on his back, had that blindfold on him. We didn't take the blindfold off until we yelled action. And so the first take in the movie, when you actually see Joe wake up, that's not that's like this moment where like Rel became Joe and you're seeing Rel slash Joe really experience this place for the very first time. And from that moment on, Rel was Joe until we wrapped photography. I'm so curious about the mill itself. I mean, what exactly was Rel, you know, pushing in these scenes? Like, I imagine, did it actually have like some weight behind it, you know, to make it look authentic? The team that has built the sets for my last two films and then and built this one as well, you know, they don't come from a traditional um, art department background, like a production designer, Amy Williams does, but then... Uh, Colin, who does the the art direction in his team, they they build all sorts of like real structures. And so when they build things, they really build them. <laughs> and it it makes it all feel real. I think it feels real for the actors. I think it feels real for the crew who is in there. It's when you're in that cell and you're seeing that mill, like everything is real. Well, you know, a, a lot of this film as well is also Joe talking. He's either talking to to a, pro, a projector or a vent. You know, there's like, like I was saying, there's not really anyone else to play off of. Um, how was that experience for you of kind of, you know, it's is have you done a film like this before? Not necessarily with I mean, I did a I 
the previous film that I directed was all set in one space. It was a family gets trapped in a bathroom during what they believe is an adverse weather event. But I've, they were in there with each other. They had other actors to talk to. There was a lot of interplay between those actors. This is very different, but maybe not as different as you'd think just because the situation was so real for Rel as he became Joe that we honestly captured it like a documentary. Like it's all handheld when you're in there in that cell. And we were just following him. We had off-screen actors that were playing the Mallard and playing the neighbor at the vent. And he would run back and forth between them and interact with them as if they were they were really there. I mean, the situation seemed so extremely real to him that it just felt like we were capturing something that was really happening. All right. Well, that looks like that is about my time. But thank you so much for chatting with me today, Sean. Uh, can't wait for everyone to see this film and happy Halloween. <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. I'm happy awesome. like it.